I'm Maeve Brennan. I'm an artist and filmmaker based in London. From a very early age, I was always interested in art and always making things, drawing things. I ended up um, going to Goldsmiths in South London, but it was in my first year of that education that I ended up um, having my first encounter with moving image. Um, and my practice kind of completely shifted there. I think immediately it became clear to me that filming was kind of a tool to take me into places and sites um, and uh, a way of interacting with people that I otherwise might not have a reason to. Around the time I was graduating, um, research architecture had opened as a department in Goldsmiths and I um, had become really interested in their research around how political and social forces can become crystallized in material manifestations. And I was particularly interested in A.L. Weisman's book, Hollow Land, which looks at um, the use of um, architectural devices in the occupation of Palestine. Um, and there was a particular chapter on stone cladding, which I was um, reading at the time. And simultaneously, I came across a book by my great-grandfather, um, who was an architect in Palestine during the British Mandate. Um, and he uh, wrote and drew a kind of architectural survey of the Dome of the Rock in Jerusalem. Um, and this book um, was quite an incredible discovery and um, these ideas were kind of overlapping and I ended up um, going to Israel-Palestine for three months um, when I was 23. Before I went, I started trying to study Arabic um, so that I would be able to read the signs. I was going alone. Um, and that was kind of the beginning of the trajectory of my work in a way. So I ended up staying in Beirut for three years. Um, and my research there kind of in some ways directly led to the film that I'm showing at Visual. Within my practice, there's a persistent interest in repair and reparative histories. And that kind of began with the research that I did into my great grandfather's book. I was uh, really struck by this sentence in the introduction in which he describes the survival of the building being kind of based on 14 centuries of maintenance and repair, so the hands of 14 centuries of people kind of fixing the building. Um, and I was really interested in this kind of um, quiet labor or this sort of um, unseen work that takes place um, in order um, to allow for the survival of these major monuments or these kinds of places. Um, and it's something that I've been really interested in ever since. So um, particularly in places that have been kind of subjected to conflict. And I was still thinking about these ideas of repair um, when I was um, based in Beirut for three years. And it was during that period of research that I kind of became aware of the influx of stolen artifacts coming in from Syria. Um, so um, into a town called Britel, uh, which is kind of on the eastern side of Lebanon. So this was a kind of like a turning point in my research. And I wanted to find out more about the demand for these objects, which is obviously the reason that this kind of looting ever takes place in these um, countries that are often depicted as not really taking care of their objects in the mainstream media. And I really came to understand that that's not really the case. Often this is a there's a term called subsistence looting, which is um, looting as a livelihood. You know, this is a resource in these countries. And so um, that's why the artifacts are dug up. Um, so really, the responsibility is placed elsewhere in these institutions and kind of, you know, major cultural institutions globally um, that have historically collected. Um, you know, even the museum as a kind of construction is based on objects coming from these other places. Um, so I really wanted to start interrogating those ideas. And that became a very long-term research project um, called The Goods, which I've been working on for the last five years. So when I came back from Lebanon, I was, I was kind of looking out for stories that would um, uh, give me a bit of an insight into the bigger um, network or the trade of these artifacts. Um, and I came across an article in The Guardian in which um, a forensic archaeologist, Dr. Christos Tsirugianis, um, was quoted, he'd identified to um, vases at Freeze Masters in London um, as illicit. He had connected them to a, a convicted dealer called Gianfranco Bikina, um, and they'd been removed from sale and have since been repatriated to Greece. Um, and in this article, Christos um, describes the violence um, inflicted when uh, looting takes place in terms of uh, 
the way that an object can no longer contribute to um, a historical narrative. So this was the beginning of the goods and um, my collaboration with Christos, which has kind of been ongoing ever since. Um, and he's also kind of one of the two main characters in, in an excavation. Um, and so with Christos, uh, he's kind of engaged with um, observing the market and trying to identify illicit objects he does this by um, identifying objects when they appear in auctions, um, museums, and collections, and matching them to images from um, an archive of confiscated records that have been seized at um, warehouses of illicit dealers. It's a sort of patient and meticulous work that's um, really kind of beautifully sort of um, antagonistic to these big institutions um, that seem to operate somehow above the law in many respects or have done historically um, and I think in you know within the bigger picture of these debates around repatriations and where objects belong Christos's work is really important so I think our collaboration has been really fruitful in a sense because um, as a visual artist I'm able to kind of um, communicate some of the work that he's doing um, and in an excavation um, this was a really kind of um, special moment. So that film documents this kind of forensic unboxing um, of uh, fragmented Apulian vases um, that were uh, two and a half thousand years old. They were looted from the south of Italy, um, probably in the 70s or early 80s. The film observes this kind of um, uh, forensic investigation taking place and then also the kind of reassembling of these fragments. So there are kind of two puzzles going on at once. Um, there's the kind of attempt to rebuild the trafficking chain, um, which hands had these objects passed through. Um, and then at the same time, there's a physical puzzle taking place in which the vases themselves are um, reconstituted. Um, and through that, we start to kind of observe the imagery on the vases themselves. Um, and these vases are from tombs, so they have depictions of the underworld. Within my films, there is always this kind of attempt to make um, history or time tactile. And there's a moment in an excavation where Vinnie describes kind of touching these objects and how close that brings her to the makers of those objects, but also to the people um, who committed the crime, who looted them. Um, so there's this direct kind of point of contact between these different moments in time, one two and a half thousand years ago and one sort of 30, 40 years ago. Um, so these times become present through um, the hands on these fragments and I wanted to bring that across. I feel like you get this kind of uh, closeness or this proximity to these objects which is impossible to get when you visit them in a museum. And I think in their fragmented state as well, they somehow offer up something else um, and at points, you know, the face of one figure can fill the screen or there's a kind of slow pan across an octopus. <laughs> and you kind of get um, this moment with the, the figures and the stories that are depicted on the vases. Christos describes um, the face of the warrior and that he's sad because he realizes he's already dead. And there's a kind of economy with which he says this, this kind of lightness, but it's, it became the kind of center point of the film because I suppose, you know, behind this film is a feeling of loss that with this market and the kind of, you know, rampant capitalism and the uh, desire for profit and to hold these unique objects, uh, uh, history is lost or our understanding of um, the people that came before us is lost. I think this film and its title and, and what takes place is kind of um, indicative of what my practice has always attempted to do and there's this sort of a process of unearthing taking place. So. Um, always seeking out or investigating kind of concealed histories or overlooked histories um, and excavating those um, across kind of different layers of time. So there are always multiple temporalities in my films and in my research. And I think that's a way of kind of contextualizing our contemporary moment. Um, so I think history is really important in terms of thinking through our own position in relation to the earth and, you know, on a more kind of ecological trajectory in some of the other films that I've made, um, you know, there is this kind of um, focus also on extraction. Um, and I think with an excavation and the antiquities market, this is another form of extraction. It's extraction from countries um, known as source countries, 
providing kind of material wealth for um, market countries. Um, and this has kind of, you know, it's a legacy of imperialism and colonialism. And um, I think, you know, beneath the kind of simplicity and the kind of concise construction of this film, all of these themes are present also. So I just spent the last few months in Italy and I was tracing these objects back to um, their sites of origin. So um, these objects were from Puglia, which is ancient Apulia, part of ancient Greece. Um, and I was visiting um, the locations where of ancient cities like Arpi, um, where thousands of tombs um, lay underneath the surface of the earth and have been looted historically numerous times. Um, and so this is the kind of beginning of another film. Um, and I see this set of films as an ongoing series. I guess I see kind of being an artist or having the life of an artist as um, being able to kind of be open and, and sensitive to the things that, you, that interest you. It's something that feels, you know, like privilege to be able to kind of scan across and look for those things. Um, so for me, that's what being an artist is. And I feel like if that's something that sounds like it resonates with you, then, um, then pursue it because, you know, there's no other discipline that lets you kind of, um, you know, follow your own curiosities in that way.